All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Schoolers, and it is time to address a lot of Washington Commanders free agency rumors. Typically, when I do Rico reports or videos where it's a lot of different topics all consolidated into, like, one video, typically I've been, like, I'm adding things day by day. So, like, one of the oldest things we're going to talk about today came from, like, a few days ago, and then it just reaches a certain point where it's like, all right, we I feel like we have enough topics. Let's dive into it. So, today we're here for some Washington Commanders free agency rumors, and, of course, I have a few drafts things on the side as well eventually once that stacks up a little bit more we'll do like a draft version of some commanders rumors as well but today we're talking about are the commanders potentially trading for cornerback greg newsom also are the bears desperate to trade down and bobby wagner speaks in I mean, a lot of people had some really interesting press conferences for the commanders, but some things that Bobby Wagner said specifically has me very hyped about what the commanders are building here and basically explains like what sold him on the commanders. Also, we have a few jersey number updates, including Bobby Wagner. So I'm going to get that to y'all as well. Also, is the tackle market getting thin? Is it getting to the point where we're literally going to have to draft our starting left tackle and there's none necessarily left in free agency? Also, is Adam Peters a finesse guy for the Sam Howell trade? We're going to take a look at the Sam Howell trade and how it compares to other quarterbacks getting traded, specifically one from his same exact quarterback class that was taken in the first round and went for less value in comparison to our boy Sam Howell. So we got to give Adam Peters his credit for that one. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinion video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. Man, I really appreciate y'all how much y'all have been supporting the channel. Y'all been going absolutely crazy, man. So make sure you stay tuned because I'm coming with videos. I mean, y'all know me, man. It's at least two videos a day, even though the past couple of days I've been busier. But hey, man, this is the second video today, and I'm probably going to do another one this evening. So it may make it third. I still have so many things I need to talk about. Again, I still haven't even discussed like the Jamison Crowder re-signing. I haven't discussed the FL Bottle re-signing. So those are on the way. But I just wanted to go ahead and take some time. Now that things are a little bit calmer, and I know people aren't necessarily the most excited about the Jamison Crowder and FL by the re-signings. So I'm like, let me go ahead and get to this other stuff that people are like definitely more excited about. And then we'll come back, double back for those as well. So stay tuned. Those are on the way for sure. And I'm working on a mock draft now that we have like officially a new set of picks after the Sam Howell trade. So be on the lookout for that soon. And let's go ahead and get to this video, man. Let's get it. All right, so first of all, y'all already know what time it is, man. And the fact that y'all have been going so crazy so consistently that now this is like a, just a part of the show. Every video I do, we just start off with this. Shouts out to my boy Terrence for the donation to the Cash App, the big time donation, man. I really appreciate the support there. And also, shouts out to my boy William. We got the same first name shouts out to you for the huge donation to the cash app man I, again i see y'all messages i really appreciate y'all for appreciating me y'all don't understand man when y'all tell me thank you i'll be like nah thank y'all man for real man because i'm out here basically living my dream of being able to go ahead and run with this whole youtube thing so i really appreciate y'all supporting me the way that y'all are doing man y'all are going crazy and again if y'all donate while i'm not live streaming and everybody's there to see it i'm there to thank you immediately i feel like the least i could do is thank you in my next upcoming video so i'm gonna make sure i keep doing that so i really appreciate y'all and let's go ahead and get to the actual information that i'm trying to give y'all this video man all right so first of all probably the thing that most people are literally clicking on this video for is all of this whole greg newsome rumor thing started shouts out to paul will fgp on twitter for providing this information and this came out like he tweeted this at 4 30 p.m yesterday so this is where a lot of this started he tweeted bram just said on with com espn 6 30 that he thinks more shoes yet to drop specifically mentioned trading for then extending a corner was pretty emphatic about it and mentioned greg newsome by name so that's where all of this started and then you also have reflog underscore 18 i believe that's how you put it he has like almost six hundred thousand twitter followers and um he's like a nfl 
reporter, media, some type of guy. Somebody hit him up and said, have you heard anything about Newsom to Washington? He said, no, sir. What are you hearing? And then the person replied back, I heard a fourth being offered from Washington. Whether that's true or not is crazy. I mean, that uh, we just got to see, I guess. But, hey, man, I'd be willing to do it. Greg Newsom is so talented and i feel like his best days have yet to come he's very young we're gonna get to that soon but if we're willing to trade a four form just go ahead and know like immediately out the way rico of street scores would definitely be down for giving up a fourth for greg newsome because i feel like that would be better than whatever corner you may pot potentially be able to get in the draft with a fourth rounder i think there's a lot of cornerback talent in this draft and i'm pretty sure that we're still gonna more than likely end up drafting somebody at corner in the middle of the round but i think greg newsom is as good as you can do with a fourth round pick as far as fixing the cornerback position or at least helping the cornerback position also shouts out the rest manual because you already know how he gets and i'm sorry i saw a comment in one of my videos that like tried to look him up it's r-e-s-h m-a-n-u-e-l shouts out to at rich manual on twitter for always providing these did you know type of facts the behind the scenes type of things he said greg newsom played in cleveland under defensive coordinator joe woods he was in denver and san francisco with adam peters and hofstra with dan quinn same connections potentially to isaac yadam which i'm sick about we ended up not getting him we'll talk about that soon but either way greg newsom is crazy man i feel like he's so talented Last season, Pro Football Focus didn't rock with him as much as I thought that he how well he played. They felt like he played well, but not as well as I felt like looking at the tape. They felt like he was a 69.6 overall grade with a 74.6 coverage grade, which is still great. But his run defense grade is a 47.1. And I, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I agree with that one. Run defense for Greg Newsom is bad. And maybe that's a reason. Maybe Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. may not want him. Like maybe these rumors are completely false just because of that alone. Because Greg Newsom versus the run is pretty awful. But coverage-wise, this guy has so much talent. He has such a ceiling. I would love to get him. And that's 74.6 coverage grade ranks him right up there with literally directly next to AJ Terrell in elite corner and that's Westlake you know what I'm saying Cam Newton Adam Pac-Man Jones Juan Gaston and Travis Smith up next you feel me but AJ Terrell you have Dio Medora Lenore Legereus Sneed he's above all of these guys Jamel Dean Marcus Peters, Isaiah Oliver, over Denzel Ward, Stephon Gilmore, Marshawn Lattimore until he got hurt last year. His coverage grade is above guys. I like that. But again, he's terrible against the run. But if we're talking about coverage wise, shouts out to this Lions fan on Twitter. He said, quote, I would be absolutely through the roof if we traded for Greg Newsom. He is only 23 years old, has learned under a great defensive coordinator, had his first year of his ball production last year, and is a tall, athletic cornerback. He could end up being our cornerback one for eight years. This would be amazing. And I completely agree. The, again, the downside is... He's terrible in run defense. There's even clips that I found on Twitter. You know, I haven't necessarily just gone and really watched this tape yet. If we end up trading for him, for him or whatever, signing him, he ends up on the commanders one way or another, then I'm going to go, like, sit down and watch his all-22 like I did with everybody else that we've signed, like Frankie Louvu, Bobby Wagner, Jeremy Chin, Dorrance Armstrong, all of those guys that we ended up signing. I went back, watched their all-22 before I did, like, a full breakdown on them. So if we end up trading for him, then I'll watch the all-22, then I'll do a full breakdown. But so far, look Look at just looking him up on Twitter. People are uploading so many clips of him literally running away from tackles. Like literally the running backs coming at him. He's doing whatever he can to buy time and hope that somebody else comes and makes a tackle. And that's a big no-no for me. If we could just work on that, I could see Dan Quinn. The reason I'm willing to get him is because I feel like Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. would force him to play a little bit more aggressively than that. And then again, the coverage skills that he have, you just really can't teach. I mean, you can improve people's coverage skills, but you can't teach his length. You can't teach his athleticism, his great hips, his change of direction skills and all of that type of stuff, his agility, his speed. And then on top of that, just the coverage instincts and things like that. It's technically teachable. It's technically coachable, but most people never get get it and shouts out to ben standig because he pointed out the fact that newsom like jamin davis is eligible for a fifth year so the browns have until the first week of may to make that decision or if we end up trading for him basically we would have until the first week of may to decide if we want to pick up that fifth year option and then ben standig went on to say i don't know enough about his career to date for an opinion on what Cleveland will or should do. If they do trade him, that's likely because they don't want the fifth year option. So what does that say about the player? 
as would be the case for Davis. So he's basically saying, like, if they're not willing to give him that fifth year option, maybe we shouldn't be trading for him, is their point. And then maybe we shouldn't give him a fifth year option, but we'll see about that. And then Ben Standig also addressed what's going on with the rumors and things like that. Somebody literally directly tweeted him. And then earlier today at 3 p.m., basically 2.51 p.m., he literally said, while this is lying season and misdirection season, I'm told there is nothing to this Greg Newsom commander's noise cornerback remains in need Washington has been trying in free agency but nothing yet so far I don't know why we let Isaac Yadam leave the building yet um a couple of days ago I don't know how we let him go to the 49ers yesterday I'm very confused by that one but Greg Newsom I'm still down though but apparently he's saying that from what he's been told I guess asking some people close to the commanders directly is that he hasn't heard anything and this is just purely like a rumor that's just going around the internet that caught fire that has no real merit based on based in the washington commanders organization this is not something they've talked about this is purely internet that's it and then he also went on to say later on at 3 50 p.m that the commanders have explored the free agency market but from what i've heard and seen mostly cornerback three types so not somebody to the level of a greg newsom still some older notable guys on the market and they've got six picks through the first three rounds they'll get help so he's basically saying that we yeah the commanders have been interested in corner but not necessarily somebody to the level of a greg newsom especially somebody you got to trade for but he said that basically it's a bunch of cornerback threes a bunch of depth guys so basically they're potentially looking at is emmanuel forbes and benjamin st juice is your one and two and then maybe you draft the guy to compete with those guys or maybe the guy you draft you see is like a one or two but they're pretty much he's saying that the commanders are comfortable with at least emmanuel forbes and benjamin st juice for now and they can wait till address corner in the draft and even if they do get somebody in free agency it will not be somebody that's actually coming in to immediately to overtake Emmanuel Forbes and Benjamin St. Juice on the depth chart they would come in and basically be a depth guy a rotational guy that wouldn't necessarily be a starter basically but then when you're cornerback three you're probably going to still play a lot but just don't expect us to go and get a guy like Greg Newsom because apparently from the commanders end of things we're not actually looking for that those are just internet rumors and then again he also noted the fact that we do have six picks in the first three rounds so we're more than likely address corner with one of those but hey man that's not the fourth round if we can still get greg newsom for a fourth round i would still do it but again it doesn't sound like that's anything realistic and that the commanders are actually interested that was really just a scenario that bram threw out there i believe that was the catalyst for this whole thing and then the internet just ran with it that's what it looks like but man let's see if we can make it happen let's see what goes on because we for sure still need some corner help help like for sure for sure we already missed out on my guy isaac yadam because again the 49ers ended up signing him yesterday and i was sick to my stomach because when jeremy fowler first did his tweet he literally tweeted commanders are signing corner isaac yadam per his agent and, and that's the notification I got to my phone. So I'm extra excited. I'm not even home right now. I'm not even able to work on a video. I'm busy doing something else with my family. And then next thing I know, I look like minutes later after being excited, like, oh, yeah, we got my guy. I look back and apparently he edited the tweet and then changed it to the 49ers. And the whole commanders thing was an accident. I was sick to my stomach when I saw I was like, no, nah, there's no way. There's no way. This has to be a prank. Then I started to see 49ers graphics with Isaac Yadam. I was sick. So basically, moving on, now I'm looking forward to, I guess, Stephon Gilmore, even though Ben Standig said that they're not potentially looking for a guy of Stephon Gilmore's caliber, maybe because they're trying to save a certain amount of money. I'm sure if Stephon Gilmore was willing to take cornerback three money, they'd be willing to get him. I'm pretty sure it's not like a, no, nah, we don't want a really talented corner. We just want a backup because we want a backup. I'm pretty sure it's a money thing, I'm assuming. And Stephon Gilmore's probably asking for more money than what Adam Peters is willing to give him. I'm pretty sure Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. would love to have Stephon Gilmore. I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't and so this is clearly another example of how adam peters is running the show point blank period nothing is moving no motion going on without adam peters says so, say so and apparently adam peters is not a fan of giving stefan gilmore whatever money he's looking for but i would love me as enrico of street scores would love to give stefan gilmore potentially whatever he's asking for but speaking of missing out on a player the Jets apparently signed Cowboys All-Pro and Pro Bowl left tackle Tyron Smith. 
and originally we saw that it was a one-year deal worth up to 20 million and then i was like whoa 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 no wonder we didn't get them that's way too much money but then it actually came out that only 6.5 million dollars of that was guaranteed so he's technically only a 6.5 million dollar cap hit and then the other 13.5 millions are based on incentives and do people typically have incentives taking up that much of a percentage of a contract like that's crazy but i understand tyron smith has been very injury prone for like the past like six years i think like i think the most games he's played in the season in these past six years was 13 games last year and even then he missed four games and you can't have your starting left tackle miss four games especially when you're the commanders potentially drafting a rookie quarterback so that's just crazy but man i would have done that 6.5 million dollar cap hit then you can go and sign like a backup swing tackle that's chilling just in case the tyron smith does get hurt you have a guy that you could just go get in free agency you can you can get two tackles for the price of what a lot of people paid for one so even if tyron smith were to get hurt you would have a backup ready to go for very cheap in comparison i i for sure would have done that so now moving on it looks like i mean trent brown is probably the best tackle available in all the free agency right now i guess i mean makai beckton has a ceiling to him but he's been very inconsistent and also injury prone at least tyron smith when he is healthy has been just straight dominant makai beckton is not only injury prone but he's not been dominant i mean after we traded Montez Sweat and Chase Young, our edge rushers were giving them problems. With Casey Tuhill and J. Smith Williams in that rotation, they were giving him problems. Imagine what that new Giants O-line would do to him. So, I don't know, man. Makai Becton would have to be for extremely cheap, like pennies, for him to be worth it. And then, it's actually crazy. When you look at the past, um, pro football focus pass blocking grades of all remaining tackles, that's available right now charles leno is a 77.8 he's the best easily and then you have trent brown 72.8 you have cameron fleming with a 71.3 josh nijman i believe that's how you pronounce that needman 65.8 makai beckton a 60.7 and donovan smith a 60.3 there's not a lot of guys available right now and then maybe i guess david Bakhtari. of course i already talked about him in my you know top remaining needs for the commanders and where we can address those needs both draft the free agency i talked about david Bakhtari. in the last time he played he was still elite like ridiculously he only played one game last year and he was elite he had an 89.8 grade um pass blocking grade so he's still elite but the problem is he's even more injury prone than tyron smith has been if you're looking at the last few years now if you're looking at the overall career david Bakhtari has technically been more durable but if you're just taking like a, a sample size of the past four years you just take a snapshot of that tyron smith has actually been even more durable than david Bakhtari. that like david Bakhtari is the definition of injury prone like the logo of it the past four years so are you willing to take a chance on him for very cheap and then sign a tackle i guess you you could try that but he's only getting older but right now my point is this tackle market in free agency is ugly it's very thin right now we're definitely this only lets me know this this clearly shows that we're doing whatever it takes to trade back up until the first round mid first late first or whatever to get one of those top tackles this is clearly the only way that this can go that i mean again charles leno is technically the best pass blocking tackle available and he's about to go through hip surgery or something like that so he may not even be as good as he already was where people were already upset at how bad he was last year so it's ugly the tackle market is extremely ugly right now i just doubt at this point that we're gonna bring in a free agent a veteran um at, for the, to start at left tackle for us maybe we bring in a guy to be a backup but our starting left tackle going into the 2023 regular season looks like it's destined to be a guy that we draft somewhere first two rounds also moving on the washington commanders have some updated jersey numbers bobby wagner took cameron cheeseman's number 54 thank you for that zach Ertz took mitchell tinsley's number 86 because mitchell tinsley changed from 86 to number 18 who was last worn by jonathan williams so just to give you those quick little updates on the jerseys again bobby wagner 54 zach Ertz gets his 86 and mitchell tinsley moved from 86 to 18 which made it easier for zach Ertz to get his 86 and then also moving on there's apparently some report breaking news or whatever from cte 
ESPN Network or whatever. And I, I believe this is a troll account. I'm assuming this is a parody account. But they said Chicago Bears front office wanted to take Caleb and trade Justin Fields. But the whole team made it known that Justin was their quarterback. So apparently the front office prefers Caleb. The coaches prefer Justin Fields, I, I guess. But the Bears are attempting to trade the number one pick. If price isn't right, then they will look at wide receivers. So it sounds like this person is saying no matter what, they're not taking Caleb Williams, whether they trade out from the pick or not. I highly doubt that. But of course, you know, as it, with Caleb Williams being my number one guy, even though I don't think it would necessarily be worth it to trade up to number one to get him, because whatever trade value you have to give up, that plus Jaden Daniels, I prefer that over Caleb Williams minus whatever, you know, draft picks we would have to give up to get him. But it, of course, Caleb Williams is my quarterback one. Jaden Daniels is my personal quarterback two. And I just personally don't feel like it's worth it to give up all of that capital, capital to get Caleb Williams. But if there is any scenario where Caleb Williams falls to us at number two, just because maybe the Bears end up preferring a Drake May or maybe they do go receiver or whatever. Again, this is a super duper rumor, not trustworthy at all. But I just wanted to talk about it and explain my point point of view on that and then also i want to talk about the fact that maybe the bears are desperate to trade out of that number one overall pick right now they have the least draft picks in the in the nfl draft out of any nfl team with four by themselves the next lowest is cleveland browns with five the next lowest is the new york giants and the miami dolphins with six then there's a lot of teams with seven there's a lot of teams with eight then we're in that top 10 of teams of draft picks with nine you have baltimore the Chargers, the saints the vikings and us with nine then you have the Bengals and 49ers with 10 and then the most is 11 with the packers cardinals bills and the rams so we're somewhere like towards the top of the middle the chicago bears are the only team in the nfl with only four draft picks and if they're trying to really build this team the right way like they should you should want as many draft picks as possible they may be desperate to trade back so if the commanders do want to move up to number one it may not cost as much as we think because the the bears are just desperate to get a lot of picks period they just may even want to just at least get back up to six or seven type of thing and it may not even cost us like a, an additional first rounder outside of our number two pick swapping it for their number one you just never know i highly doubt it happens but i'm just throwing those thoughts out there for you and then moving on bobby wagner said some really interesting things first of all he said he's pursuing his nba at howard right now so did that play into like his whole calculations of you know first time ever leaving california i'm gonna go to dc and i'm gonna go ahead and get my nba at howard like was howard one of the reasons why he chose to come to the commanders or did he just choose the commanders and, and was like i am pursuing nba so i might as well go to howard since it's closest we never know it's an 18 month program online but wagner said quote that might change now unquote indicating he might attend in person some now that he's in the dc area so okay that answers my question he was looking at howard no matter what he was willing to do it all the way online completely online but now that he's playing for the washington commanders he's like wait a minute i could actually just go to howard and go to classes i don't know when he'll find the time in a regular season but you never know and then also wagner said that he looked up to former linebacker london fletcher growing up that's big time he said he reached out to him for advice in the past and said quote he's been a huge help in my career unquote that's what Wagner said. That's big time, man. Again, like I already said, the comparison to Bobby Wagner and London Fletcher, they're already connected because in my opinion, Bobby Wagner and or Frank Lu Lu Frankie Louvu, whichever one, or at the very least, both of them at the very least, are the best linebackers we've had since London Fletcher in 2012. Easily, in my opinion. I don't even feel like I have to really even think too hard about it. Also, moving on, Bobby Wagner said that he chose Washington because of Dan Quinn and linebackers coach Ken Norton Jr. And he also emphasized, quote, Nort's one of my favorite coaches of all time, unquote. And remember, Ken Norton Jr. was a defensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks for a little while. And now he's just coming here to be our linebackers coach. Again, our coaching staff is filled with guys that have had much larger roles and are coming here to take smaller roles just to be a part of something big. I'm telling y'all, a lot of people were telling me that we wouldn't land a top GM. I told you we would. A lot of y'all kept telling me that we wouldn't get, um, we wouldn't be a top free agency destination. And look at us now. I, I, I'm telling y'all, man, things are really moving up. Things are really looking up. Also, shouts out to Kevin Sheehan for bringing this up. 
He spoke on the fact that Bobby Wagner has spent his entire life on the West Coast, born in California, played college in Utah, played only in Seattle and L.A. for the NFL. And he moved all the way across the country to take a one year deal for a rebuilding team at 33 years old, which tells you all you need to know about the influence of Dan Quinn. Shouts out to Dan Quinn and his recruiting capabilities as far as this coaching staff, as far as these players, man, because I feel like a lot of these players wanted to come play for us just simply because Dan Quinn was our head coach we're killing it in free agency right now I feel like you can honestly say like half of it is Adam Peters and the other half is literally Dan Quinn it's been going crazy now moving on the Eagles apparently traded for Kenny Pickett and I thought that was hilarious because boy and I liked Kenny Pickett coming out of college but you have to realize by now he's not it so I'm happy that the Eagles traded for him first of all they lose draft capital and secondly if there's ever a reason he has to play I would love our defense to play against him. I would love every opportunity that our defense can go up against Kenny Pickett, especially this new revamped defense that we're building here with this new regime. Oh, man, please let Kenny Pickett hit the, hit the field when we're going against him. I beg of them. And then also, with that pick, with the trade that they did, it, it's actually crazy that Sam Howell basically ended up getting more value in return in, in the trade that we gave to the Seahawks, then the Patriots got given away Mac Jones and the Steelers got given away Kenny Pickett. And Sam Howell was taken last out of all of those guys. I mean, to really break it down, Pickett was drafted in the first round and was at worst going to be the Steelers quarterback two, I guess you could say. And then Howell was a fifth rounder projected to be quarterback three. So how did Adam Peters find a way to get more in trade value in return for trading away for Sam Howell than the Steelers got for Kenny Pickett? That's absolutely amazing. Like Adam Peters is out here really finessing people. And then on top of that, add to the fact that Kenny Pickett's cap hits over the next two years are three to four times more than Howell. So maybe that's why, but it's just crazy that we took Sam Howell in the fifth round, traded him for more picks, and he's going to end up being less of a cap hit than Kenny Pickett was that's just absolutely maybe that literally explains why but i also feel like there's a lot of adam peters or in juice involved in this man we're like he just got pulled man this boy got some pull to where people are really really allowing him to get away with some of the things that we're getting away with right now where other people may not be able to get away with it also What's really interesting is that now after Kenny Pickett has been traded away, I believe the Steelers don't have a backup. And shouts out to Chris Cooley for pointing this out. He said, hey, man, we'll give him Marcus Mariota for a fourth round pick if y'all are willing to do it. I thought that was absolutely hilarious, but I'm also dead serious. Can we please do that? I will take anything from Marcus Mariota right now. We can go find and sign another backup quarterback at, at that's as good as Marcus Mariota. I feel like you can find a guy like that walking around the street, which is, of course, why the Steelers would never Never give up a fourth round pick for Marcus Mariota, especially when they could have just signed him like we just did. But hey, man, shouts out to Chris Cooley, Marcus Mariota for a fourth. Let's do it. And then lastly, before we get up out of here, it was officially announced a few days ago, March 13th, that the commanders have officially released Nick Gates. His release was technically a little delayed. We had to wait until like the actual start of free agency, you know, actual Wednesday. 4 p.m. Eastern time for that to actually go through. The other ones, they were already immediately released and things like that. Nick Gates took some time. So I just wanted to give you the update that it's like officially happened as of now. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video, especially the Greg Newsom part of it and how we're we should address corner and things like that do you believe the rumors do you believe the hype do you believe the commanders may actually be interested in greg newsom and also of course let me know if you want greg newsom and would you be willing to trade a fourth round pick for a guy like greg newsom that does run away from the running game i mean he'd be running like the running back he looked like he on the same team as him sometimes and then you also of course let me know how you feel about the commander's missing out on my boy Isaac Yadam. Let me know how you feel about us missing out on Tyron Smith. And what? who is the best tackle available in free agency at this point for you? Because, again, like I said, it's clear we're going to tackle early in the draft. We may even trade back up into the first, late first, mid first to get a guy. So that's obvious at this point. We could just go ahead and move on from that debate. But who's the best tackle available in free agency that you'd be willing to sign that could potentially start for us while the guy that's drafted, you know, maybe he needs some time before he can start 
start. He may not be ready week one. Let me know how you feel about Bobby Wagner's comments and why he chose the Commanders. Let me know how you feel about the Chicago Bears potentially being desperate to move back and our chances of potentially moving up to get Caleb Williams or even Caleb Williams just falling to us at number two. Let me know how you feel about the whole Sam Howell trade in comparison to Kenny Pickett and Mac Jones as well. All of that type of stuff, man. I really appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all stay tuned. I really appreciate all of the Cash App donations. Please leave a like on the way out. Stiff arm that like button. Stiff arm the subscription button. Stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. I really appreciate y'all, man. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out. Oh.